Hey saddle hunters, people have been asking me for a long time, hey, which saddle do you like the most? Do you like this saddle more than that saddle? And those questions can be kind of hard to answer. So in today's video, we are going to kind of do the ultimate two panel saddle review. As most of you know who followed the channel, I have gravitated toward two panel saddles. I love them. There's one saddle that's not a two panel saddle that I really, really love, and that's the Dryad Dre. But most every one of these saddles I would take into the woods with me. And I just love the flexibility that you get with a two panel. It allows you a lot of customization as far as where your pressure is coming from, what gets support, and I find them to be very comfortable. Most of these are more comfortable than any single panel saddle I have used. So today's video, instead of making this an hour long feature film, I'm gonna try to keep it to as close to a half hour as I can. And here's gonna kind of be our format. We are going to give you some fast facts about each one of the saddles just up on the screen. Talking about things like weight, talking about things like size options. And then we're gonna go through three features that I think are very important to guys looking at two panel saddles, and I'm going to give them a letter review. And that's because I think that these are things that are generally fairly objective, okay? The first thing that we're gonna talk about is packability. So for you guys that are concerned about storing your saddle in your pack, maybe you don't wear it in, you just wanna stuff it in, how packable is the saddle, okay? That's quantifiable. The second thing we're gonna talk about is wearability. If you wanna wear your saddle into the woods, how is this particular saddle for wearing in? That's gonna be something we're gonna look at. And then third, and perhaps most important for two panel saddles is panel management. You know, one of the headaches with some two panel saddles is, is panel sag and how easy are the panels to keep together and do they shift and move on you and those types of things. So third, I'm gonna give you a letter score for panel management. What kind of features has the company built in to help you manage the saddle. And then I'm going to give you about five minutes of my impressions of each saddle. Two minutes probably of just talking through what I like about the saddle, maybe what I don't like about it, and then a few minutes in the tree with each one kind of giving you my preferred method of use when using that particular saddle. Now, keep in mind that's the subjective portion of this review. A lot of things on saddles are objective, but a lot of them are subjective. And so when it comes to that point, my experiences may be different from your own and though that's okay. You know, it's gonna differ very on, varying, uh, depending on your body type, your body size, your hunting style, whether you like to sit, whether you like to lean, what you value most in a saddle. All of those things are gonna have an overall impact on whether or not you love a saddle or you don't love it. So just keep that in mind as we talk about that. So we're just gonna go down the line here. Our lineup for this video includes the Latitude Method 2. And that comes in two different sizes. We have the Cruiser Archon. That comes in two sizes as well. And for any of these saddles that come in two sizes, I have the smaller of the two sizes, just so you know. Our third saddle here is the Tactus Saddle Adapt DSS. And then we have the Tree Hopper Recon, the Tethered Eberhardt Signature Saddle, and the Overwatch Outdoors Transformer. Now, one last thing that I wanna point out to you about every one of these saddles is that they're all high quality. You know, you're not gonna pick up one of these saddles and find that it's just a crummy, low quality saddle. These are all excellently built and uh, I trust my life with every single one of them. This isn't gonna be a super detailed review though because I have very long detailed reviews about every single one of these saddles on my channel. So the purpose of this video is just to give you a quick comparison in case you're thinking about buying a two panel saddle. All right, the first saddle I wanna talk about and give a couple minute overview of is the Latitude Method 2. You'll notice this is a very sleek saddle. It, uses a magnet system to hold the panels together. And as we talk about panel management, Latitude has come a long way from the first method when it comes to panel management. These magnets are super tight. They hold the two panels together, very, very solid, super easy to use. All you do is pull it apart and, and it comes apart. The other thing that they've incorporated into the method two that wasn't included in the method one are these straps in the middle. So they allow you to set your distance between the two panels. So if you find you like the saddle 
a particular or the two panels at a particular distance apart you can just set those and it holds them in place i found that that makes a big difference especially when i'm sitting in this saddle so from a panel management perspective latitude's done a really good job with this saddle i love the rope belt that they include in this saddle it's just very solid very secure very comfortable it's fast easy to adjust this saddle wears in very very well it sits high up on your body you can hardly even tell you're wearing it the amsteel bridge has uh, great adjustment it does not slip at all on the bridge loops in my experience it's got well thought through lineman loops overall guys this is a really good saddle now a couple downsides to this i have not found this to be the most comfortable of the bunch matter of fact far from it um, of these it's near the bottom of my personal list when it comes to comfort and a lot of that I think is due to the size of the bottom panel. Now, keep in mind, I primarily sit. And when I'm sitting, I just find that on this bottom panel, these two straps are too close together and I can't seem to get pressure off of my hip joint in, in a position that's comfortable for me when I'm sitting. So that to me is the biggest downside. When I'm leaning, uh, when I use this saddle actually, I lean and it's very comfortable to lean in. But for sitting, I just cannot make this work and I've put a lot of hours into it. So uh, we'll throw it on a tree now and I'll give you a, a few thoughts about how I lean in it and use it. All right, so let me give you a few thoughts on the latitude method in the tree. First off, panels are really easy to manage in the tree. To deploy it, you just grab those little handles, pull it down, comes right off the magnets. You can see those straps hold the distance that I want. To put it back up, I just grab it pops right back into position. So very easy to manage the panels on the latitude method. If I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna pull this bottom panel down so it's basically centered on my butt. And I'm gonna lean back into it. I like to loosen the waist belt up on most saddles when I get into them. Sit back into it. The straps hold that upper panel right where I want it, kind of in my, in my back. I've noticed with this a little lower tether height than what I've got now, which is about nose level would be helpful. Chin, chin is, is helpful for leaning, but uh, you can see you just get really good support up in your upper back from this saddle. What I find though, when I go to sit in this, let's let a little bit of length out. I just have a hard time getting these straps away from my hip joint. It's gotta be about right there. And then this strap, you can see it doesn't, you know, I want it sitting there, but it doesn't even contact my body. So I've played around with all kinds of adjustments and I just can't make sitting in this saddle for me work as comfortably as some of the other ones. But for leaning, this one works really, really well and shines above a lot of the rest of them. So it's a good saddle. And if you're a leaner, you will probably love it. All right, the next saddle that I want to talk about, because it's the most similar of all the rest of these to the Latitude Method 2, is the Cruiser Archon. This is an excellent saddle. Of all the saddles I've tested, this is one of the most comfortable. It's right near the top of my personal list when it comes to comfort. And there's two or three of these that I think are, are very, very close in comfort. And this is, this is one of those. Now this, this saddle, the thing that I like the most about it is this bottom panel. You'll notice that the bottom panel is much larger than the bottom panel on the Latitude Method. It uses a thinner webbing up here at the top. And so because it's so much wider here and it uses this one inch webbing instead of a, a one and three quarter or a two, it just is so much harder for me to get that hip pinch and pressure that I get from the Latitude Method too. So this larger bottom saddle footprint just cups my entire butt. I find it very, very comfortable. Whether I am sitting or leaning, it's just a, a winner in the comfort department for me. The bridge and the bridge loops are some of the best I've seen. These bridge loops are super stiff, which helps the bridge to grab on. I have never had this bridge slip at all. It is just solid. It's, it's one of the best bridge and bridge loop connections that I've seen in a saddle. Uh, obviously tons of adjustability with this Amsteel bridge. You can cinch it all the way down. So for the walk-in, even though this is a little bit bigger than the Latitude Method, it still wears in very well. Removable leg straps, just like the Latitude Method. 
Uh, the Lyman loops are very large. They've got the red stitching on the inside, which is a nice feature of all of these. This is right there with the tack to, cattle, tack to saddle as far as how easy it is to see in the dark. This is the only one of all of these saddles that has two different kinds of molly webbing. It has the open kind and the flat tight kind. So whatever kind of pouch you like, you can, you can run it on here. I just use the top and it, and it works out fine for me. Now, from a panel management perspective, it uses these two straps, which is nice because it pulls those together. And let me just adjust these down. You can, once again, kind of set your distance once you get in the tree and it will hold them a, the right distance apart that you like. Now, that's a super nice feature. The downside is that these straps are hard to adjust. It almost requires two hands. So, um, well thought out, but, but I just wish they used a little bit different of a slide adjustment here because they're just hard to, they're hard to work. But that's the biggest downside. Other than that, from a panel management perspective, they, they get the job done. They hold it up tight and, and hold it where you want the panels to be. The other downside I've noticed with this saddle is the waist belt. So they use a pretty thin, what looks to be a seat belt webbing, and it will slip through this Cobra buckle pretty easily. I mean, if this Cobra buckle isn't being pulled a straight 90 degrees, it, it will walk itself out of there pretty easily. So that's the biggest downside I have found with this saddle is that the belt will just work itself loose as you walk in. The other thing is you'll notice the belt is in the middle of the top panel and it does not support the molly. So depending on how heavy a pouch you're using, the top of this might be prone to tip over a little bit. Some of the other saddles don't have that. So that's the Cruiser Archon by and large. It's very, very comfortable and uh, one of my top two panel choices. All right, so here's the Cruiser Archon. Let me show you how to manage these panels. You can see I can't just tilt these up real easily. I basically have to use two hands to get them adjusted. I'm just gonna pull them all the way out to show you guys multiple positions. So that's kind of a hassle. They'll hold in the right position, but I gotta use two hands to get them to loosen. So let me show you leaning first. Leaning in this saddle, very easy. I just center that bottom panel over my butt, set the top panel wherever I want it. I've got the bridge just, a, just above halfway. And to me, that's just super comfortable. I mean, the, the size of this bottom panel in my mind makes all the difference in the world. There's just no, pre, there's just no hot spots. It's just, you, my pressure just gets super evenly distributed. So to lean in this for me is just, very comfortable and very easy low fidget factor. Now, let's talk about sitting. Let a little length out. Go a little bit longer. So my knees are probably 100 degrees or so, but you can see my butt just fills out that, that bottom panel. I'm gonna raise this one up just a smidge, kind of, kind of recliner-like. When I get it where I want it, I can just pull those straps so that they're tight. And that is very comfortable to sit in. And I've done long sits in this saddle just like this. It's, to, to me, the bottom panel just makes it way, way, way more comfortable to sit in. I, I don't worry so much about the strap across my, my joint. It just misses it easier because it's a little bit wider up in through here. So very comfortable both for sitting and for leaning if you're a guy who switches back and forth quite a bit the archon may be the saddle to look at all right so this here is the attack the saddle adapt dss this saddle is unique from all of these because it's not exactly a sling style and it's not kind of like your more traditional two panel saddles like we just looked at in the latitude method in the archon it uses three straps and so you've got one that kind of goes up high around your waist and then two that go down low. They're very easy to manage. They just slip through the leg straps and you can slide them up and down. And there's enough friction that they, they kind of stay put. I have noticed that for the walk-in, they'll, they'll occasionally sag down, but you just got to grab them and push them back up. So panel management isn't, isn't horrible, though it doesn't work perfect. The waist belt is very, very well done. 
the webbing is thick and it's this buckle is very affirmative. It doesn't slide on you. It has webbing keepers, so that's done well. The Lyman loops are the easiest to find in the dark. Not only do they have the strip of orange, but they are reflective, so I really like that feature. It uses leg straps that have a G-hook connection, so there's not much metal on this saddle to make noise. The bridge loops are have kind of a rubber, you know, in the middle of them, and it's supposed to help grab but it uses this webbing bridge that's just girth hitched on both sides and and it will it will slip a little bit it's not horrible um and, and it's probably no more than an eighth to a quarter of inch most of the time but uh it, it, it can slip but the bridge is pretty easy to adjust in the tree you just pull on this to to kind of shorten it i'll show you that in the tree but a lot of adjustability in the bridge so feature-wise, this, this is a nice saddle. It's built very well by John Tucker right here in Michigan. The downside with this is I haven't found it to be super, super comfortable. Um, I think this would probably be my saddle of choice if I was a hybrid hunter, meaning that I carried in a small tree stand like a Lone Wolf Custom Gear 0.5 and I just wanted a lightweight saddle that I could use as a, a lineman belt configuration. And then if I wanted to break it out into a you know, a saddle set up for some reason, but still wanted it to be very minimalistic, this is what I would choose. And it gives you a lot of flexibility in that department. And for leaning, it's really not not too, too bad at all, but um, I just can't sit in the thing. So for me, it was kind of a no-go. So let me get on the tree. And we'll talk you through that a little bit. All right, guys, so I've got the Taxi Saddle Adapt DSS on here. You can see just how those panels just hold right there on those leg straps. Then to lower them, all I'm gonna do is just grab them and push them down. So panel management's pretty easy other than the occasional slight sag. It might wander down to a couple inches on the walk-in. But for leaning, I just like to push those down. You can separate them as much as you want. So I like to give them just a, just a couple inches. And for leaning, I'm gonna walk that up a little bit more. I like these right up near the top um, probably an inch or so away from the end of the bridge loops and uh, and that's about where where I find that I like it but for leaning you, you know that's a that's a good comfortable position now this isn't going to provide you the comfort as the other ones are just in my experience there's some people who are going to say this is the most comfortable thing they've ever used in my experience that's not the case uh, the straps just there's not as much place for the pressure to go so it's a little more localized so for leaning this is about how i would do it like i said i think this is a good saddle for the guy who's doing the hybrid type of setup now if i were going to go sit let a little length out get those two straps kind of underneath my butt i can sit I just have a lot of pressure over my, my hip joint. And for me, this is a pretty short lived venture. You know, I find myself fidgeting in about 15 or 20 minutes. So as a standalone saddle, I haven't enjoyed this, to be honest with you. I think there's a lot more comfortable options, but as a minimalistic hybrid, I think it works pretty good. I was gonna show you the bridge. It's got just this paracord adjustment on this tri-glide. To shorten it, all you gotta do is pull that up or to lengthen it, sit down into it. To shorten it, just gonna do the opposite. You're gonna pull it up and then you have to pull the tag, kind of the back end out so it cinches on that tri-glide, but it's pretty easy adjustment. So that's the tack to saddle. Like I said, very easy to manage the panels. You just pull them up. And for the guy who wants good lineman loops for climbing the tree and then wants to sit down in his stand without the saddle getting under his butt or making him uncomfortable, this is a really good option. So these next two saddles that we're gonna look at are very similar in design. These are what we'll call sling style two panel saddles. They're made of seat belt material, kind of fashioned after the original Anderson tree sling. You'll see they have two panels, both about six inches wide, just made of seat belt material. Now this is the tree hopper recon. It has a good molly with some gear loops at the top. And I've come to like one or two gear loops. So I like that feature. 
This has Lyman loops that, that I don't, I'm not a big fan of these Lyman loops. They collapse very easily. They're, they're black, so they're hard to find in the dark. So of all the Lyman loops on these saddles, these are my least favorite. This is the, the best priced saddle coming in at like $150. The waist belt works fine to tighten the saddle up around your waist, but the waist belt does not support the molly webbing at all. So if you put a pouch on here, you get really bad saddle sag. And I've tried to flip the, flip the panels around inside of these, um, you know, a, a rings, so to speak, that they have to hold them together. And I just cannot get away with the panel sag. From a panel management perspective, um, it's, it's one of the worst of all of these. The panel sag just drives a lot of people nuts. So it's hard to, to wear this in at all, but from a packability perspective, it is the best. I mean, it just rolls up to the, nothing. I mean, barely bigger than your palm and you can fit it inside a dump pouch with ease and put it in the bottom of your backpack. So packability, it's the best one of them all. Wearability, it's the worst one of them all. It just can't carry pouches in at all. I like the bridge on it. This tubular webbing slides through carabiners very easy and this design that he has adjusts very very quickly. So you can shorten the bridge on the fly very very fast. It's it's just a good well thought out easy to use design. I'm a big fan of, of that bridge. You got a lot of adjustability and it can be made fast. So this is a very comfortable saddle in, in my experience. You got to make sure it's sized right. If it's too small and, and kind of these plates here, if those plates hit too close to your hips, you'll get a little bit of pressure I found on the front of, of your hips. But if they, you know, are, if the saddle's the right size and it comes further, far enough forward, I've never had any comfort issues with this saddle at all. I'm a big fan of the comfort of this in the tree, especially when it comes to sitting. So I'll show you that now. Got the tree hopper recon on. As I mentioned in the intro video, these panels just are really hard to manage for the walk in. But when you're in the tree, they're pretty easy to manage. They don't slip super freely through these plates because they're covered in rubber and they've got the waist belt strap fed through there. So they don't slide around as easy as like you'll see on the, the ESS. So pretty easy to work. Uh, what I'm gonna do typically is take the inner panel and just slide it down a little bit, loosen the waist belt, add myself a little length because with these sling saddles, I like to sit in them. And then I'm just gonna separate them. I like to have it so that the bottom strap of the top panel overlaps the top strap of the bottom panel. So that I've almost got like three independent straps. I'm gonna put them right underneath my butt. And that's how I'm gonna sit. And for me, this is really comfortable. I can sit like this for hours and not move. Is for sitting, it's just easy. Um, if I was gonna lean, and I can lean, I just take up a little bit of tether length, and you can separate these a little bit more if you want. Pull it up into your lower back. I don't find that these plates work as well to balance pressure as the D-rings, which I'll show with the ESS, but you get pretty good lower back support, and, and you can lean like this quite, quite comfortably. So for a guy that primarily sits and might lean, you know, 10 to 15% of the time, I think these sling styles are very good. And when it comes to in the tree panel management, the recon is, is all right. When it comes to wearing it in, not so much. So keep those in mind when trying to decide whether or not the recon is the saddle for you. All right, so the next saddle that I wanna show you is the Eberhart Signature Saddle from Tethered. This is just like the Treehopper Recon in that it's a two panel design after that Anderson. This saddle is quite a bit different though. First thing you'll notice is that it uses D-rings and the D-rings allow the panels to move through very freely. They are a noise factor. So this saddle is gonna make the most noise of all of them that we look at but the D-rings really do a lot for comfort. 
This saddle, I can literally sit down in on a four hour sit and just sit there and not have to make a single adjustment. I mean, from a comfort perspective, it is fantastic. And I think a part of that is due to to the D-rings. They just automatically distribute pressure between the two panels in a way that the other saddles don't. So while you have to manage the noise on them, they add a lot for comfort that in my opinion is worth it. So now let's talk through how it's a little bit different from the tree hopper. You'll notice it has flat tight molly, which I like. The Lyman loops are this, this tan, which they're just wide open. They're easy to clip into. They're easy to see in the dark. Don't have any complaints about them. You'll also notice that the waist belt is attached on the same section of the panel as the molly. So there's no panel sag when you put um, a pouch on here because it's carried by the waist belt. That load is carried by the waist belt. So it, it holds weight much, much better. You're not gonna get the panel sag. In my video, I sh uh, my detailed video on this, I show you how to use these clips to manage the panels for the walk-in. And, and I haven't had a problem wearing this saddle into the tree for miles and miles and miles. So take advantage of those tips. Uh, the, the one crummy thing about this saddle is the bridge. It's just hard to adjust. I think they missed the mark on this. There's ways to do webbing bridges so that they function very well and tethered. It's just hard to adjust. It's, it's a pain in the neck. So um, in the past, I have ditched this. This is honestly the second one of these I've owned. I have ditched this and replaced it with a cruiser am steel bridge and that's made a big difference. It's helped to quiet these down, also uh, giving me additional adjustability. So I'd suggest doing that if you own this saddle. But other than that, from a panel management perspective, it can be hard to manage these panels, a lot harder than some of the other panels. But from a comfort perspective, I think these D-rings make a big, big difference. So let me put this on the tree and I'll show you how I wear it. So here's the Eberhardt Signature Saddle. Let me talk about how I manage the panel a little bit when I get into the tree. I use these clips to hold the panel together. All I'm gonna do is push down on the clips. It pops out, separate the two panels. Now, the outside panel, which is the lower one, you're gonna see is gonna naturally hang down. That's something you didn't see with the recon. It just moves a whole lot more freely through these D-loops. So, I drop that and then I loosen my waist belt a little bit and I sit into it. Now what I like to do again is overlap the bottom strap of the top panel and the top strap of the bottom panel. So I just kind of get sat down into it, grab those straps, overlay them how I like them. And I like them just a little bit below me so you can grab them near the top and kind of just move the whole setup. You gotta loosen your waist belt a little bit to do that. And right there is about how I, how I would run it. And guys, in my experience, this has been just super, super comfortable. Uh, it, it's like a kid swing almost. I, can, I just sit here for three, four hours at a time and I don't, I don't feel the need to make any adjustments. Uh, if I wanted to make adjustments, it's easy enough. I just grab that top panel, move it up. So now I've got my seat a little bit further apart. I can move them even further apart. Um, I don't like to do that. It gets weird pressure points. Now for leaning, you can bring the one up higher. And the D-rings kind of automatically center the pressure. But the nice thing about the D-rings is you can push on them and change the load position to the bottom or the top, however you you kind of like it. Now, personally, if I'm gonna lean, I'm still gonna keep them down low and um, just so they're coming up over the lip of my butt right there, I'm gonna lean in it like that. And I find it very comfortable. Some guys may wanna add a back band, but I lean so little that for me, this is just, just fine. No hot spots. A lot of guys wonder like, hey, do you get hot spots with all that webbing going across your hip joint? And for some reason, I just don't. Uh, you know, I'll get that in other ones, but in these sling styles, it just I don't get anything that I would even remotely think of as hip pinch. So very comfortable in my experience. Now, managing the panels, a little bit harder in the tree because they move so freely through the D-loop, but 
it's a learning curve and you figure it out. So if you're looking for a saddle that's oriented towards a sitter, that's just very comfortable, this is the ticket. All right, the last saddle that I wanted to show you guys is the Overwatch Outdoors Transformer. And that's because this is kind of a hybrid of what we've looked at so far. Kind of a hybrid between that sling style design and ones with more traditional kind of paddles. This one uses Cordura over top of the webbing frame. So it has kind of a frame similar to those sling style saddles inside of here. And then it's got the Cordura on top of those. And then it uses these straps in the middle to manage the two panels. These straps work very, very well. They're easy to do one-handed, so you can set the distance, control the panels, you just pull it up together. And this can function a lot like a single panel saddle, more so than any of the rest of them. So if you're a guy who, who kind of thinks he wants to try a, a two panel, but he's liked single panels, this may be the one to go with. A couple other things to point out. This is the only one of all of them that has removable, also adjustable, and yet load rated buckles on the leg straps. So that's a big deal. Lyman loops are thin, point out easy. They're just, I don't have any complaints about them. Um, not the easiest to find in the dark because they're kind of dull colored, but other than that, they, they work great. All American uh, components, ADF Raptor buckle. This buckle can be a little noisy, um, and there's no, there's no real avoiding that. But he has adjustments for the tag end on each side so you can tuck it, tuck it away. So other than the noise, you know, it, it works good. This also uses D-rings, like the Eberhardt saddle. And like I said, these D-rings are super helpful to make adjustments and they just do it automatically for you, really. The pressure just gets distributed between the two panels. There's not much more I can say about that. You, you don't have to fiddle moving the bridge up and down the bridge loops until you get the pressure where you want it. It just kind of does it automatically. And so that's, that's super helpful. This bridge is nice. You can feed it through the D-ring and then tend the Prusik. And I'll show you that when I get in the tree, but that works very, very well. Lots of adjustability on this saddle. Um, super similar to the Eberhardt, but just with some, some refinements and differences. I'm a big fan of this saddle for sitting and for leaning. It just, you just get a, the ability to, um, to make easy adjustments, and yet it's very, very comfortable. So I don't have many complaints about this saddle at all, other than once again, potential for noise in the buckles and the D-rings, but easy to manage the panels and lots of features. It's the only one with a rappel loop on it. If you're running like an auto block below whatever rappel device you're using, you can hook it on right there. Nice flat webbing, which, which I prefer. Uh, it's just a, a good, comfortable quality saddle. So uh, those are all of the, the saddles that we're gonna look at. Let me throw this one in the tree and then I'll give you some concluding thoughts. All right, guys, so here's the transformer. You can see I've got the two panels together, kind of in what you would call single panel mode. And I can lean like this. It's very comfortable. If I wanted to make adjustments, the panel management on this is very easy. All I'm gonna do is spin around, grab these two clips, push my thumbs against the bottom panel and flip them up, and then just kind of drop that bottom panel. Now they're, they're separated. And I can keep the lower panel below my butt, slide the upper panel higher up into my back for a little more support. And a lot of people are really gonna like that added back support when leaning. This once again is very comfortable for leaning and I don't get hip pressure or anything like that. I think that's just due to the width of these straps. So this is another very good position. Let me show you my preferred position, which is to sit in this. So to sit, I personally pull the panels all the way back together so that they're touching. I'm gonna slide it really low down below my butt. Let some tether length out. Didn't have the waist belt real tight. <laughs> but uh, then I'm gonna sit into it. I like my legs about 100 degrees or so. Get them all right below me and that is just very comfortable. I can sit like this for four hours without moving. It's just uh, really easy for me to hunt from this position. So this saddle is very versatile. It's 
easy to manage the panels. It has the comfort of the sling style. Yeah, it's a little easier to use. And for you guys who like to sit, I think this is a home run. Also gives really good flexibility for leaning. And as I mentioned before, you have the ease of use that comes with the D-rings. And then it's really easy to use the bridge on this. Mine's a little bit harder because it's one of the original versions, but he sent switched the Prusik, which allows you to just feed it through the D-ring and pull the end of it and tend it. On mine, it's, it's a little bit tighter and I got to loosen it up, but then I can tend it just by pulling the tag end and, and you get the idea. So a lot of great features built into the transformer, high quality saddle, and perhaps the most versatile of all of these two panel saddles. Well, saddle hunters, those are some of the most popular two panel saddles on the market. I hope this comparison has been helpful to you. When it comes to me, at the end of the day, there's a couple of these that I'm gonna grab and they're, they're right here on the end. These are the two that I find myself gravitating toward the most. I'm also a, a fan of the Cruiser Archon, but uh, these two are the ones that I seem to, to like the most. And I think it's just, I, I like saddles that are easy to use and that D-ring just kind of centers the panels right where I need to do, right where I need them without a whole lot of fidgeting. So that to me is a big deal. Big fan of both of these. Your mileage may vary. I hope this has been helpful to you and giving you a little bit of overview of the options that are available on the market today. Uh, once again, a lot of this is gonna be subjective depending upon how you hunt, what your style is. I sit primarily and so I struggle with the latitude method, but these saddles are built more for sitters and, and I just, I like that. If you're looking for something that's kind of middle of the road, maybe you lean a lot, maybe you sit, the Archon balances those two things very, very well. And so I'm always tempted to grab that one as well. Um, but excellent options across the board guys and you just got to think through which one's going to fit your style the most if you've enjoyed this video and you like the content i'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe helps me bring you more content i hope you guys are having a great fall and good luck out there